morning, everybody. Good morning. Can everyone please stand to their feet? How are you guys doing today? Come on, can you talk back to me? How are you doing? On a scale, on a thumb scale? Are you doing good? Are you doing all right? Are you doing bad? Okay, I see mostly thumbs up. That's good. Are you guys ready to worship today? Oh, come on. You guys sound tired. Are you ready to worship today? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to sing about his great name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands.
go into this next song, I want us to just think about something that is not allowing us to just want Jesus. It can be an ideal life. It can be school, a relationship. It can be anything. Sometimes as young people, we get stuck in this anxiety, anxious, like decision-making process where every time we wonder, like, are we doing this right, God? Is this where I'm supposed to be? Am I supposed to be in the school? Am I supposed to be here? But in Psalms, God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. It doesn't mean I will give you what you want. It, it means I will give you what I desire for you. So just press into that this morning. I encourage you to just worship in your own way. Um, if that means lifting your hands, sitting down, whatever it is, just press in this morning.
to 
Father God, we are so caught up in your presence. More than anything, we just want you. So Father God, we lift up our hearts in worship and praise. And we give you all the honor and glory, Father. In your sweet name, Jesus. Amen. Can you all say with me, Lord, here I am. Let's say that again. Lord, here I am. I am so honored to be before you um, this morning. If we've spent some time together on Thursday nights in Kaleo, I want some of that Kaleo energy this morning. I want to hear you. I want y'all to laugh at all my jokes. I want to hear some amens. Um, let's bring some of that energy this morning, right? Even on a Monday morning, Lord, here I am. And so um, I am so like excited. My dad's birthday is tomorrow. He's turning 70 years old. And this man of God, he is 10 years cancer free. Um, I remember my first like morning chapel here in FEC. He sat on this first row and like once I said my closing prayer and said amen, he like jumped up and started clapping and you see him in the video like just standing up and I just love that dude. And so I want all of you to sing him happy birthday and we're going to do the wave all at the same time. Is that sound? No, I'm just playing y'all. Just playing. Trying to crack a joke at Coba. I don't even have my phone up here, so just, just joking. But I do have an announcement before we get into the Word and the series this morning. Um, on Wednesday, we have a very special celebration for our community. It is our presidential inauguration. And so how many of you have class like right after chapel? You're like out of here, ready to go to class. All right, so you are able to stay with us and celebrate at the presidential inauguration because that class immediately after chapel is canceled. I know some of you are like, no, I really like that class. I don't want to miss it. And I am just letting you know that you're a part of this celebration. There will be food. There will be all this good stuff going on over here. <laughs> so presidential inauguration, you don't have to rush out to go to class because your professor will actually be in here in their regalia. So. No one will be at class, so don't worry about that. So we are going into our university practice. Um, I have the privilege of teaching on our university practice for the school year. And so our university practice for the school year is restful increase. Can you say that with me? Restful increase. And so in the time of COVID, we all had to clear our schedules, right? You had to just stay home. Like, nope, not doing that. Can't celebrate that. Graduation, oop, cancel. We had to literally clear our schedules. And so now that things are opening back up and feeling a little bit more like pre-COVID normancy, we now than ever need to establish some rhythms of Sabbath. We need to be able to establish rhythms where we can just sit still, receive and rest. And so our culture, we are so addicted to busyness and filling space. Like if you have a Google calendar and there's some white space in there, like you're like, I need to fill that with something. And we are addicted to this and it's a part of our culture. And because of this, we multitask. And some of you, I need to let you know, and this is a word for you, that you are not as great at multitasking as you believe. And so since we continue to fill space, we multitask, right? So you can be sitting here right now. You can be sitting still, but mentally running, fixing, and problem solving right now. Like some of you are thinking about homework that you need to complete, a conversation that you need to have. Your mind is constantly running. And so you can be physically in one place, but emotionally somewhere else. 
And so when we are distracted, we are unable to truly, like, totally receive from each other. We're unable to learn, and we're, like, unable to truly care about anything that's going on around us when our mind is somewhere else. And so think about this. When you are here to learn, right, you're here to earn a degree and learn valuable skills to take out into the world. But if I'm constantly going into spaces where I'm not fully able to receive, like, what are you paying for? Like, we're literally coming into spaces unable to fully receive because we're multitasking, because we have so much on our plates and in our minds. And so this, this term, restful increase, can feel like an oxymoron, right? Where it could feel like, because there's so much going on, rest means inactivity. Rest means, like, there's a lack of productivity. And I don't have enough time to not be productive, right? And so when I say restful increase in the spiritual reality, it means this. Intentional rhythms of worship and rest prepares one to be fully present, engaged, and hospitable to the presence of God and community. And so when I am able to have intentional rhythms of rest and worship, I can be my full self in this space. When I'm able to have rhythms of rest and worship in my life, I am able to be hospitable to the presence of God. And some of us, we need that. When we finally experience it, we're like, I want to have this all the time. And you can just be present. And so spiritual rest requires a partnership with God. Trusting God will bring increased productivity excellence and strength when we are obedient to rhythms of Sabbath, which combats the rhythms and pace of our culture. So in order for me to say, you know what, I do have a lot of assignments to complete. I do have these things that I've agreed to, and I need to get those things done. But in order for me to truly rest, I need to partner with God trusting that God is going to give me the energy, the capacity to focus, and the excellent of God's spirit to finish what I need to finish in the amount of time that I am given and have. And so it means that you need to trust God, that God will give you the increase, because oftentimes when we just go, 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 we're, we're, we're like, we're the ones just doing it. I, can, I trust myself to get it done. But in this instance, in our spiritual sense, we're trusting God to partner with us, to be actually able to complete something sooner than we would have if we just hadn't taken that nap or we hadn't gone to that Bible study and were refreshed in ways that increased our capacity to do things well. And so I want to ask you a question as we kind of, as we try to practice presence here this morning, I want to ask you a question. What's a concern or need that may serve as a distraction today? Not just in chapel, but today. What is a concern or need that may serve as a distraction where you can physically be here, but emotionally somewhere else? You can be sitting here still, but your mind is running and you are uh, exhausted because we have some options as you think about that thing and as you name it. We can play mental gymnastics and try to just fix it now. While you're sitting here, you can become exhausted and even frustrated and upset that you even have to sit here for chapel right now. Or you can allow this space to be a time to actually just take a break from the expectations of doing and finishing and resolving problems. You can rest right now. You can simply just be and receive. You're not asked to do anything but just show up and just receive. So you have some options. Keep thinking about all the other things you have to do after 1120 or you can sit here and just be before your God. And so let's practice presence, where this opens us to the awareness of Christ around us, but also the ability of Christ to meet those needs and concerns. So let's practice presence this morning as we go into scripture. It's coming from Luke chapter 10, and it says, 
As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, we came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answers, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The Lord, word of the Lord. And so Jesus says, you are worried and upset about many things. I, I remember this story, and the author is unknown, but it's the story of how Jesus just asks this believer to just complete one task. And so Jesus says, take this thing up the mountain. And as this person is going up the mountain, someone says, hey, while you're up, on your way up, can you take this for me? And he says, sure, I'm on my way up, so my, I might as well. Here, I'll take it up for you. And as they continue to go and continue to go, someone else says, hey, while you're on your way up, can you take this for me? And that continues and continues until it gets to the point where the person who was given one task by God becomes so frustrated, overwhelmed, and tired that they drop all of the things and they say, God, why have you made life so hard and difficult? And as they cry out to God about all the things that they were carrying that they completely had to just drop it, Jesus says, I only asked you to carry this one thing. And so oftentimes when we become worried, overwhelmed, and upset, it is because of the very things that we have said yes to. And so Martha invited Jesus into her home, right? So she said yes to being a host to Jesus. And this is a big deal. Like, I am someone who loves to plan parties. Like, if people say, if you weren't a pastor, what would you do? I probably would do party planning. Like, I love it, right? But I do, like, seriously, every time get frustrated with my husband and my kids. And I'm like, stop touching stuff. <laughs> like, like, stop, help out, like, just sit still. And so I can imagine if Jesus is coming over to my house, I'm like, everything has to be in place, you know? And so I can imagine just the, the pressure that Martha was feeling for inviting Jesus into her home. But we have to remember that Martha was the one that gave the invite. So she gave the invite, and then her, her motives and how and why she's getting upset is very clear. She says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And so Martha is clearly concerned about impressing Jesus. She says, don't you care? And so Martha is trying to live up to this expectation that she's placed on herself because it's clear that Jesus doesn't have this same expectation for Martha. Jesus responds, Martha, Martha. And so Jesus is like, look, I can make my own snacks. <laughs> and they're probably going to be better than anything you can try to put together. He's like, chill out. I got this. I can make my own snacks. Like, I came here to fellowship with you. I came here to get to know you, your sister, and your brother. Like, just be present with me. Stop trying to impress me. Like, he's saying, Martha, disciple, learn from me. And so his response of only one thing is needed. Jesus invites Martha into discipleship and the yoke of his instruction. And so it was unusual for women to sit at the feet of Jesus. And some people like to, like, interpret this very literally, where it just says that, that Mary was just literally sitting at the feet of Jesus. But this was not an expectation for women to sit at the feet of a rabbi and learn, to receive formal training from a rabbi. And so their expectation as a woman was to prepare the house, run the house, take care of the children. 
And Martha lived under this expectation for years, and that's why she put that pressure on herself. And so she becomes very angry with Mary for having the nerve of taking the posture of learning from Jesus. And I want you all to just realize that this isn't just a message for women because sometimes we use this Mary Martha story of like women stop being so busy. Even though I want the women in here and the men to recognize that Jesus did not place this rigid understanding of womanhood on Martha or Mary. But this is a lesson for everyone that Jesus is inviting us all to sit at his feet. When a disciple would like agree to sit and learn under a rabbi, it was said to sit at their feet. They learned from the rabbi and they would also take their yoke upon them, meaning that they had committed to their understanding and interpretation of scripture. And so Jesus is inviting both Mary and Martha under the yoke of his instruction. Jesus says, this is the better part. Sitting at my feet, you will find answers to your concerns. You will find comfort for your pain. And you will find peace in the midst of overwhelm. And this cannot be taken from you. Like Martha, in the midst of worry and frustration, she's drawn to her work and performance instead of the presence of God. So when we get busy, Jesus gets pushed down lower and lower on our priority, to, on our priority list. When we are weary, things that were designed to give you spiritual rest and refreshing feel like a burden. So things like serving at church or coming to chapel or having quiet time with God feels like a burden because it's like I just don't have time. It feels like an obligation versus something that I'm eagerly looking forward to, that I get to sit with believers. I get to learn. I get to just be before the Lord. And although we can become upset and even jealous of the Marys around us, because I've been there, like, do you lazy? You, you know, and it's just like, no, we can get frustrated because when I think about the hosting situation, I'm just like, yeah, Mary, get up and help. And we can get so frustrated with those people who have figured this thing out. They have found the better part. And so Mary even rejects the expectation of her sister, the men around her, and she refuses to place this expectation on herself and she receives spiritual rest. And so I want to um, read a verse that is very common to you all, but I pray that in, this, in connection with this Mary Martha story, it will have a new life for you. It says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so at this time, I want to invite the band up because I want to give you all some opportunity to continue to fight the distractions and concerns that you may have brought into chapel and receive some spiritual rest have the opportunity to just give those concerns to God himself. And so when Jesus says, my yoke is easy, we know that it doesn't mean that this Christian walk of discipleship is easy, but it means it's gentle and eternally good. Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better part, and this cannot be taken from her. The yoke of Christ is eternally good and consistent. The target and the expectation isn't always moving. At the feet of Jesus, you won't have to code switch. You won't have to be concerned about impressing him. Your worship is enough. And so in an invitation to discipleship, 
is an invitation to rest and learn at the feet of Jesus. And so, and still, with hearing these words, you may still be worried and upset about many things. And so, again, at this time of responsive receiving and worship, I want to ask that the question that I had in the beginning of what's the concern or need that may serve as a distraction today? And I want to encourage you to leave it at the feet of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that you want to offer us spiritual rest, that you invite us to your feet to learn from you because your yoke is easy and your burden is light, Lord. It's costly, but it's light. It's eternally good. And so we give our concerns to you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. just want to invite you to just linger in the spirit of worship. Um, we have the permission to do so and um, the opportunity to, so feel free to just stand if you want to, or even just sit at, in your seat um, and just pray this, this song over your life. just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song take me back to where it started I open up my heart to you I'm kind Nothing else, nothing. 
nothing else, and nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, just sing it out, nothing else will do. take these last 60 seconds to just put up that one thing that's really in the way um, of just wanting Jesus. Just think about that one thing. It could be a lot of, it could be a lot of things. Um, but yeah, just think about it. Sing 
it out. I just want you. Come on, tell him. Sing nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. just want you, Jesus. More of you, God, less of us. We just want you, God. So as we go about our day, our week, um, may, me, may we remember that. Um, God, give us your desires. God, we don't want anything else but you, Father. Jesus. Amen. You are now dismissed. <laughs>